that's it. So it'll be two, at least two covers. So you've got your front and your back. And then the rings will just clip in, uh, obviously, two rings. And that'll make your journal. And the nice thing with that is, you know, you can then have... I've got one of um, these type journals. I think this is a... Yeah, a ranger one and it's great it's great for sort of um decorating and sort of doing different bits in but as you can see mine barely gets used but the problem i find is if i want to put anything in it that's quite thick it doesn't close properly um and i'm going to end up ruining it so the nice thing with these is you can sort of have them sort of any thickness load the pages in yourself you can do them as separates and then add them in nice and easy and um I've done it at a size that, you know, sometimes when you've got a big piece, it's you get a bit worried to sort of start it or you find it difficult to fill it. If it's too small, same again. So I've done a size that I think should be approachable by everyone. Okay, so I'm going to try and make a sample. So we're going to go with the flow. Uh, I don't want to make it too complicated. It's just going to be a couple of different techniques and it's just going to be about like creating some layers and adding some colors and um yeah going going from there really okay so i have got this wonderful paper um who does it say it's by 13 arts uh this is called his and hers a part of him uh, and that's it i've had it for a long long time whether you can still get it or not i don't know uh, I'm not sure if it's frozen. Oh no, it's not. Uh, it's got. It's in the creamy sort of buff colour one side, and it's a very similar, um, if not the same design on the back, but with the black. Now, either colour would look good, I think, on a journal page. But for the purpose of this, I am going to use the black side. So I am going to decide which piece on the black side I want to use. It doesn't really matter, does it? And I'm going to make it just a bit. It doesn't matter, I'll make it about the same size, but potentially just a bit smaller than the outside. I won't actually, I'll cut it the same because I'm going to mess up the edges a bit and so that will make it sort of blend. So I have drawn <laughs> with pencils, but with all these lines on it, <laughs> it's blended in. But I'm going to cut just inside the line. Now it doesn't matter if it's perfect. Uh, I want it to look a bit grungy and whatever else and I'm actually going to scuff up or um you know sort of mess up the edges of this so it doesn't need to be fit it perfectly because it's not going to go on there perfectly anyway uh hello to anyone that's watching all right just checking that my sound was still working after that one time where i i went live and i didn't have sound for like 40 minutes i am now paranoid so say hello uh <laughs> Let me know you're there. What have you all been up to this weekend? Um, I don't know if my chat's just not working. I don't know if anyone said hello yet. Okay, so I've cut this. It's about the size of that. And I'm now going to use my edging tool to mess it up. Now, if you haven't got an edging tool, you can use your scissors. You can open your scissors up and sort of drag it along. And it creates that, that sort of um, worn sort of edge. But I have got an edging tool and so I am going to use it just because with me and scissors it's safer for me to use the edging tool. Um, but that's not to say you have to have an edging tool, obviously, if you've got, haven't, just scissors. I mean, I find that the effect that I get a lot of the time from just scissors is actually better, but... Like I say, I am a bit dangerous. Can anyone... I can see there's a few people on watching. Just wondering if everyone can hear me okay. Um, am I just not seeing the chat? I'm not sure. But then I guess if I'm not seeing the chat and you're saying, <laughs> yeah, we can hear you, I'm not seeing the chat, so I wouldn't know anyway got the chat up I would have thought I should be able to hear it see it sorry okay so I'm messing that up now if it tears in some places that's fine over and under that's fine doesn't matter which way the folds go but I've just wanted to 
scuff that edge up and now I'm just going to use some standard glue to stick it onto the back so let's see it has got a kind of right and wrong way because it's got writing on there actually I'm not going to stick that on yet it's got um, writing on there. If it didn't, obviously I could put it anywhere. And it doesn't matter because you can have the writing sideways or whatever. But um, let's do this. So I'm going to do the edges black. So I'm only going to do the edges because obviously where this is scuffed, um, it might not go right to the edge. And I don't want to see the buff colour underneath. I want to see the... I want to see a black underneath and if um, there's no point painting the whole center piece because I'm covering it now the reason I'm using the paper is because like I said at the start I've had this paper a really really long time and I just want to use the paper I want I want to start using what I've got in my stash and as I'm doing a steampunk or a, a mechanical or whatever you want to call it theme I want to be able to um, I thought it was a perfect chance to use this paper up now if you didn't have uh, a paper like that you could paint the entire thing black or white or buff and then stamp on using some sort of stamps to create that background but the nice thing is if you have got a paper that's sort of like that is it just saves you a bit of time saves you a bit of time saves you a bit of ink or if you're a little bit worried about, oh, where do I stamp? How do I stamp that make it look okay? Um, you know, if you've, if you've got a piece of paper, to put on instead, you haven't got to worry about that. And so this is my cheating method for instead of stamping a background because my last few lives, whether it be in this group or other groups, have all been making inky, messy, stamped backgrounds. So I just wanted to show that, you know, if you're not confident to do inky, messy, um, obviously try and make sure you haven't got paint all on your hands before you start rubbing your paper. Um if you yeah just to show that if you're not confident to sort of use stamps to make a background you can just use paper that you might have in your stash and it's a good way to like i say use up some of your paper so i'm going to i should really wait until this is fully dried because otherwise i potentially could push it off because it's not going to be stuck properly yet but um just found you here doing a live i'm on facebook in between cooking though Oh, Angie, it doesn't matter. If you can't watch for long, The it's the fault that counts. And um, I hope that whatever you're cooking is lovely and you enjoy it. And this will be on replay afterwards. I'm at least glad that someone can see the live and um, can hopefully hear me. Because after that last, not the last time I've done one, but the time when I had the issues, uh, it's left me always paranoid now when I'm doing lives. And my Hubby has done a wonderful roast dinner. Hi, Diane. Uh, Hubby has done a wonderful roast dinner inside. And I'm out here. And I smelt it when I popped in to use the loo. And it was de smelt delicious. And he was just about to dish up. And I was coming out here to do a live. So, yes. I'm, uh, <laughs> my belly's, if my belly grumbles, I apologise now. Okay, so I am, I've got all of these bits. I am planning to use... On this journal cover, slow cooker. I'll be his paramedic here in Edinburgh. Just time for some dinner, nearly ready. Oh, lovely, lovely. He's he's done some beef that we got off the butcher on um, Friday. Oh, and it, oh, it's phenomenal. I must admit, he he can uh, cook a roast really well. So I will look forward to it when I go in. Okay, so these are all the bits that I'm planning on using. Uh, like I say, in the show coming up on the 23rd on Crank Craft, we'll have these journal covers, the hearts, there'll be a selection of cogs. I mean, obviously, for those of you that know our products anyway, we do. Oh, look at this. Look at this box of cogs. Mm, 
we do um, packs of um, cogs. It says 20 plus because there's always over 20. Uh, but, you know, it, it's just random the, the amount we're putting. But there's always over 20 in there. And it's just a mix of all different cogs. Now, I'm not sure how I'm going to put them in kits when it comes to the show. But these are some of the cogs. I've taken a selection of them. These are, I think, Tim Holt from a Tim Holt set. This is, I'm not sure what mould it's from, but it's, can you see? It's little clock parts in there. Uh, I will find the mould and the little face, just a bottle top. Doesn't have to be a particular bottle top. And these are the bits I'm going to use to build up my journal page. So, uh, the first thing I am going to do is... I'm going to add a bit of something on the back. So, using uh, Distress Ink. So, you could use Distress Ink or Distress Oxide. Just remember, Distress Oxide will definitely show up a lot more, even if you use it in exactly the same colour, than an ink wheel, uh, just because it's the nature of it. So, I'm going for Distress Ink. Also, I wanted the red, and I haven't got uh, fired brick in an oxide. So, I am just going to add a bit of these in the background go over that again and it doesn't matter if I don't line it up properly because I just want the impression of it on there and again this one I'm gonna do here I'll just get that on there now the um, these are from an Andy Skinner stamp set again i've had them for absolutely donkey's years and the idea is is i'm going to make sort of here's going to be the focal point and i'm going to have uh, cogs and that sort of around it and under it and so the, this is just the start of my layers so the, the background bit is just the start of the layers it's the first layer so um where should we go next okay so let's Right, I'm going to paint my heart white because then I'm going to do some stamping on it and get my heart ready. Um, so let's get some white. Actually, the first thing I want to do, I did do one earlier, is I, for those of you that have joined me before, you know I say I'm terrible with crackle paint. I've tried using this Cosmic Shimmer crackle paint. I applied some really thick on the on the side of a heart just sort of with my finger on here and here i've done it earlier because you meant to let it dry a bit and i am going to use it um it wasn't crackling and i ended up wiping some bits off it has crackled a little bit i don't know if you can if that'll focus in it's crackled a little bit but as much as it hasn't crackled as much as i wanted it to it is uh something and even these pieces will add texture anyway. So I'm still going to use it. Uh, it's the only bit I've done earlier because I just thought, well, you know, I'll give it the time to, to dry naturally. I always try and use a heat tool on these things. And that's perhaps where I'm going wrong when I try and get crackle. And yeah, it still hasn't done anything. So if you've got any recommendations for any really good crackle, although in all fairness, anyone that's ever recommended me any and they make fantastic crackle with it. I still can't. Um, if anyone's got any that they think are foolproof crackles, please let me know. <laughs> um, normally, I resort to my crackle stamp, but I actually want the texture in there. So that's why with this gesso, I'm not being majorly neat. I will rub it around the edges, but I'm not being precious about getting um all of the bits in because again because it's going to be a bit grungy and a bit rusty and a bit everything um it doesn't have to be perfect that will add to the grunginess so you know don't be perfect don't be precise let your gesso create some more texture for you okay so oh, didn't get any tissue ready Okay, so let's put the lid back on my already very dry gesso and just trying to wash my brush off because I keep not washing them off properly and then I end up ruining them. Okay, so I'm just going to give that a dry. I am going 
going to use this stamp. Now, I am not one for cleaning my stamps. I give, I do give them a wipe over, and if I've used anything like a, a versum, uh, uh, an embossing pad or that on my stamps, I do give them a wipe over because that's sort of more a uh, sticky substance as opposed to an ink. But generally, I don't really wipe my stamps off. And um, with this type of stamp that's got lots of detail, you can see, it doesn't matter which way I put it, you kind of, and I have left this on its backing, you kind of lose what's what. So it's always handy to keep the pack that you've got it um, in because now I can clearly see, obviously when I flip it, I can see what bits are where. So if I don't want to use all of the stamp, which I'm not going to in this case, I can pick out the areas that I want to use and make sure I can stamp them up because obviously just looking at it, I can't actually see the details. And this, if anyone wants to know, is all on Create number 116 Industrial Scripts. So I really, really like this one. So I am going to go for this sort of section here, which on uh, my stamp will be this bit here. And so I'm going to give it an ink up. And then I am going to press that onto my heart. And then... Let's go for um, this bit that's got a splat in it up here. It doesn't really, really matter if I'm honest. It's just to add something to the stamp. And I'm going to go down the bottom there. Actually, I might go a bit further down there. Okay. Right. And that is, that is that for that. That a little bit of a blast. And then what I'm gonna do to sort of add some colour to the heart, and at the same time as I add some colour to the heart, so I'm trying to dry the ink. Um so it doesn't move. At the same time as I'm going to add some colour to the heart, I'm going to add some of the same colour, the rusty sort of colour that I'm going to use to the edges of this because I don't like where you can see the white um, around the edges. So I, I want to colour it. I don't want to colour it necessarily black. So um, let me... So I have got similar colours in different brands so this is Pebio and Dela Rowney might be saying them completely wrong but anyway both of these uh, I got from Hobbycraft these I think I might have picked up from a show I'm not sure I've had them for a long time and um, transparent yellow iron oxide and quinacridone gold now as you can see by the colours they are very similar so if you've only got one lot, just use the one lot. But the reason I'm going to use both is I find these fluid acrylics really quite watery and you can see through them, uh, hence the transparent, although it doesn't say transparent on this one. Uh, you can see through them to sort of see the stuff behind. These are a lot thicker, especially this one, which is a high viscosity one. These are a lot thicker and al although you can add water to them to make them runnier, and to make them easier to apply, they will show up more than these ones will. And I, I kind of want to add colour to the heart, but without it being in your face. So I'm going to use these two at the moment for that one, but I will use the other ones at a, at a later point. But if you've only got one, I would probably say, if you're, if you're going to go for, uh, if you can only get one lot of paints, and th these are because I've collected stuff over the years. Um, whilst these are fantastic, these are probably more value for your money. And these, in my opinion, can be watered down to give you the effect that these ones do. Uh, but then you've also got the joy of them being nice and thick and that to use when you want to use them nice and thick. Whereas these ones, you can water them down further than what they are, but they're quite watery anyway. It's really difficult. As much as you could add them to, um, add them to something else, you will then use, lose some of the colour. It's harder to thicken it up than it is to sort of water these down. So uh, for me, if you had to get something, I would get these type of paints. These are sort of more value uh, for money, in my opinion. But it's each their own and we all have our favourites. But for now, 
I am going to put a little bit of this on here and I'm going to give it a spritz and I'm going to take a brush well, that's probably too much water to the stuff Boop. and I am going to start adding it around but I'm also going to spritz it with water because what I don't want is it to be really thick with colour and I want that colour to sort of leach all over I don't want any white left on the heart so if um, by giving it a spritz of water it just helps it move about then that's great because we don't want any white bits on the heart I also though don't want it all to just be solid in this colour so there will be areas like at the edges here where I will look at making it slightly darker and then whilst that's still wet I'm going to add a bit of the darker colour in and again I'm doing that while it's wet because it helps it blend better rather than sort of sitting on top okay so it's quite wet on top of that now at the moment which is why I can get away with sort of adding it and it blending in okay and so we're just making it we're just adding to it just where we think making some bits darker than other bits and if you think anything needs to be you know to bring the color back a little bit you can but not too much so oh my fingers are dirty so I want to leave the, the centre sli a slight bit lighter because it helps just draw your eye in. But I don't want to leave it really light. There we go. That's got a bit of feel to it. Okay, so it's not quite white in the middle. As you can see, um, it's not quite white in the middle. It has got that sort of dirty look to it. <laughs> dirty look, that sounds bad. But it's it's got a yellow into it now. But it's still lighter in the middle so your eyes sort of drawn in oh I feel a bit not with it I don't know my brain has all of a sudden gone and I've kind of lost the flow of what I thought I was going to do okay so let's just let's just keep going and see where we get to so let's give this a dry And as it starts to dry, remember with a lot of paints, as it dries, the, the colours uh, generally get a bit lighter. But you will see, I don't know, I think on the camera it looks quite white here. But it's, it's not white anymore. It's a definite, uh, got a colour to it, a colour to it. However, yes, it is lighter than the edges. And that's intended because all the time when we when we're thinking focal points and focus points we're thinking of drawing the eye in so the same as when we do it here and we're drawing the eye into the middle and then we're drawing the eye into the middle again okay so whilst uh, i've got these colors on here and i will put a bit more on oh perhaps a bit too much whilst we have got these colors on here i am going to add some around the edge now it's okay if it comes in a bit on the edge as well and what I should probably do here because this is just a paper um, backing that I've got on there is really I would probably recommend that you cover it with some clear gesso so you don't lose the background but that when you're putting this paint on it can be sort of easily more easily manipulated and you don't risk warping um the paper that you've got on there because it's just paper at the end of the day 
um, whereas a bit of clear gesso will sort of help protect that now because this has got the colors it's got the, the white bit on there when you're adding the color it, they're also taking a bit of color which is good it all adds to the texture uh, don't forget if anyone's got any questions on any of the techniques that I do or use or you know whether it be uh, why do I do something a certain way or is there something else you can use instead or anything like that just just say just give me a shout so I'm just trying to get rid of, rid of some of these whites don't like white edges so I'm just gonna make sure we've got rid of all of them and again a bit with the uh, quinacridone, qu oh, for God's sake, quinacridone gold. Again, I'm going to use some of this just on certain areas, not on all the areas, because what makes a good project or what makes something look effective, in my, in my opinion, and again, art and crafting and mixed media, it's all subjective. Um, what make something look more effective in my opinion is when it's not perfect so if the whole of the edge was exactly the same color that for me is too perfect and that for me doesn't doesn't feel right doesn't look right so it's just about adding now this second color here and there all right and again you know the whole process all the time it's just about layers adding that extra bit and then when you do the next one add in another bit all right and so we're just and so our edges of our journal are now starting to look a bit more grungier and that the center isn't yet but don't forget most of that's going to be covered and we haven't finished with that bit yet either okay so let's pop these out of the way for now right i'm gonna give that a little dry because i don't want my paper warping but, like I say, it probably would be better to give it a bit of a coat with clear gesso or a watered down PVA glue just to sort of give it that little bit of protection. Alright, I'm not going to dry that fully because it can sit and dry while I'm going on to the next bit. Okay, so the other thing I want to do whilst I've got bits of these colours on the palette and again uh, you know you could add more to the palette but if you're like me you don't want to waste anything so I don't want to add any more than what I need it's easier to add it because what if I add something on there that I, I don't use um, then it's it's gone it's wasted so I'm gonna add oh, some of the red again to give it that rusty sort of look and it doesn't have to be exact again some bits can be darker than others I just want that to have some color on it and I think also I'm going to use on this one and again while it's all still wet because whilst it's wet you're wet blending and uh, it will blend better and it will flow easier I'm going to use some raw umber okay I'm just going to add some bits of that in just to dull that down a bit and give it a dry because then we get a better idea of what colour it's going to end up. And I like that. I like how that's looking. It's got that sort of rusty look, but, you know, just of a colour. Now, what made that move easier is the fact that it was wet had i let the first layer dry then added the raw umber the raw umber would sit on top and you would see it sitting you know you would see it was something you put on top if your layers below are still you know slightly wet slightly fluid that's when you get the blend and the movement and things look far softer and nat more natural so that's um that piece done right okay what we're going to do next uh let's go with let's see what our layout is going to be on here so i'm going to start using the pieces i've got the bottle top because i was going to use it up the other way but i'm not i'm going to actually use it to raise stuff up now so i'm going to work my layout out and then i'm then i'll kind of know what i want to do with the layers so if 
if I imagine that this heart's going to go in the middle, um, I'll put cog there, another big one. I've got another big one. So this was now going to hold that up like that. All right. Well, let's have this piece under here. And obviously they're not going to stay like this. They will be um, painted and tinted and stuff like that. Okay. So you have to just bear with me while the cogs are whirring while I'm deciding what's sort of what's gonna go where. Let's pop that under there. And you know, take your time when you're sort of doing your layout. Really decide where you sort of want stuff. Have a look, see if it sort of looks right. See if it sits right. Mm. Just so it's all about just building up layers and height. Sure, I like that one on there. Let me have a look through my. I need something smaller. Hmm. Well, maybe that. Maybe that there. Yep. Okay. All right. So I think I'm going to go for that sort of layout. So now it's getting the colours. I'm going to add these in as well somewhere around here. Anyway. So now it's about getting uh, the colours on. So. Right, let's move these pieces off. So, I am taking the layers off, but I'm going to try and keep these pieces in their position so I can stick them down. So, I want this piece that I put my paint on, put a bit of glue on the edge. And let's get sticking. Okay, if you're not sure, Wee pieces. I'm going to put my paintbrush on there, and I know that it's going to be level with that and level with the level with the end. All right. Now, if you've got a, if you're going to deconstruct your whole uh, thing that you've done, then I would recommend using your phone to take a picture so that you can look back at your picture and you can see where you had everything and you can put it back in the positions that you. Uh, wanted to put them in I mean sometimes don't get me wrong you might find better positions to put them in and you might be happier with their new places but if you are keen on getting them back exactly where you got them from take a photo or try and keep them in place like this now I'm using uh, just glue this is our glue but you can use a gel medium or anything like that to stick them down so I can see that that goes in the middle of that circle so if you've got backgrounds like this that you can use uh, for knowing where you had stuff then use that yeah I'm using our glue and the reason I put it on and then pat it on with my finger is so that I don't fill all the gaps if I squirted that on there pushed it down it all squirt into the gaps and I don't want that so I'm taking it off patting it on with my finger and then I'm sticking it down okay and so I can just check by putting my heart back on is everything still roughly where I want it this might need gel medium behind it because uh, it's all higgledy piggledy at the back. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, I'm going to put this bit here. Still happy with where it all is. That's going to go on there. So I'm going to have this. I should put this here and that there. Nope. 
definitely prefer the smaller ones at that side. I need to refill my glue pot up. Okay. And I'm putting these all on now like this because I'm going to paint them on there. Why am I going to paint them on there, you say? Uh, because, well, I'm going to paint some on there and some not on there. But... I might stick that one on in a minute because I'm not going to be able to get underneath. No, I'm going to leave that one on there. Right, okay. So the only ones that I've kept off at the moment are these two, which are going to go on the heart there. I'm going to keep this one off because it's going to go across the heart because I want to take the heart off while I'm painting um, the base bits. I am going to use a bit of gel medium to put this bottle top on. And the bottle top is literally going to be to help hold that up there. Now... This doesn't seem level. I mean, if you haven't got a bottle top, you could use, um, actually, which I might use because it'd be easy to stick. One second. I have got lots of circles here, so I'm going to use some of these to give me the height. The bottle top would be better saved for another project where I'm actually going to use it and you're going to see the bottle top. Um, you know, it'll be, it'll be better used for a project like that. And also, um, you know, it seems a waste to just stick it under something it's different if bits bits poking out or something like that but it's not so i'm going to use these scraps i've got here they will work to raise that up okay so other than that getting that in the position that you want it okay so other than that these bits are all stuck on and I'm going to paint them on there. Now I'm going to let them dry for just a second. Um, you know, the longer you can give them to dry, the better. But I'm going to leave them to dry. So back to the question, why, why am I going to paint them on there as opposed to painting them separately, which is what I'm going to do with these ones? Well, I'm going to paint these ones separately because they overlap areas that I don't want to get paint onto. And I'm going to paint these ones on there because at the moment these are very much placed on top but if I paint them so that the paint goes onto the paper and then I can feather the paint or smudge the paint so it, it sort of blends in and it softens it into the paper then all of a sudden everything starts to blend into one everything starts to come together rather than these looking like they're plonked on there they become part of the background so these layers have become part of the background so the reason and I'm sorry if uh, for a lot of you this is like <clears throat> teaching you to suck eggs sort of saying this sort of stuff but for anyone that's new to mixed media you know I always think for me I learn better in understanding why I'm doing something rather than just saying put these on here and do that I find it better to understand why why am I doing it that way uh, because that gives me an understanding and I'll remember it better for next time but it also enables you that if you think well actually I want the look where they look placed on there as opposed to looking like part of the background then you know not to do it this way around you know keep them cogs off paint them separate add them on after so they look like they are you know completely separate from the background if you want it all to kind of blend in and the whole project to sort of uh, be unified as such then this is potentially the way to do it so it's just giving people the means to be able to you know change things to do it the way they want to do it so while we're waiting for them to dry a little bit, because I'm going to paint them on the background, I am going to add some Distress Embossing Powder, Walnut Stain, to my heart and my clock face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dab it on. Now, by dabbing it on like this, I will end up with, with what I call sort of sharp edges and corner edges, but... The beauty is when you add this is you can take it off where you want to take it off. I am going to be covering the letters, uh, the numbers, yes, 
but that doesn't matter. So see what I mean by you've now got a straight line? You can see that there's a straight line there. Well, we don't want the straight line, so we just give it a little rub with our finger. It's not set yet. It's not in place yet. If you want to see one of the numbers a little bit more and you want to knock this back a bit, that's fine. So you're tapping off what's loose and then let's soften the edges that look a bit square. And then we'll see where that gets us because we can always add more after. And then I'm going to do the same with a heart. So I'm going to focus down this edge. And I'm going to focus a bit here. I don't really want to cover up here because I've got um, some nice texture going on there. And again, looks like very uniform. You've got straight line bits. So give it a rub. If you don't want to rub it with your finger, obviously rub it with a, a paintbrush. But make sure you sort of clean your paintbrush off after so the idea here is I get a much more organic look by knocking some bits off okay and it makes it look more organic and natural before we set it once you've set it it's too late you can't do that so take it off until you're happy we can always go back in and add a bit more if we think it's sort of not got quite enough and now I'm just going to heat it now. Um, because of the nature of this, you're the idea is you're meant to put it on, heat it up, let it turn, and then you're meant to uh, sort of rub it back, rub it off. I never find rubbing it off really gives the effect that I want it to have but I do rub it a little bit and what it does is it takes away where it gets a sort of real shine to it or a bit of a shine to it by rubbing it off sort of dulls it back down and then that to me is a much better sort of aged look but because of the nature of it it does take a little bit longer I'm trying to get close enough that I can see whether it's turning or not takes a little bit longer to turn well, bear with me a second I've got my wrong glasses on so I'm struggling to see oh, that's better I'm off that age where I can't well I can't see with glasses at all I haven't been out to for years but I've got glasses for seeing sort of when I'm walking along or stuff at a distance and then glasses for this sort of stuff. Oh, that feels better. It's been really straining to see. Okay, so because of the nature of it, the crystals are a little bit thicker, so it takes a little bit longer to turn. But it's just like um, normal embossing powder. Once it does, just keep sort of following it along until it's all gone and the nice thing with this is it's got that real sort of grittiness to it now I'm not going to use a cloth to rub it off I'm just going to rub it with my finger and it's got that real sort of um, grittiness to it that gives it that really sort of nice aged and pitted sort of look you can see that there and again here I'll rub it just to take that shine off All right meant to let it cool down before you rub it off because otherwise you'll end up rubbing too much and again really happy with the sort of grunginess that that's giving that heart there okay so now these these won't be totally dry but they'll be dry enough for me to get on to the next bit all right so I am going to black gesso and I'm going to paint over it so I'm keeping this brush to hand and it's already wet on the end so the first thing I'm going to do is paint these pieces because these do not need anything special other than they just need to be painted so that's it painted Right. and then this one and 
Okay, so these pieces on here, I'm going to give this a little coat, but it doesn't really matter because it's covered. And just make sure around the edge it's covered. So these pieces here I'm going to paint. Now, when I get it around the edge on the uh, onto the paper, I am going to, whilst it's still quite wet, I'm going to take this brush, I'm going to make the brush wet, and I'm going to put this on here so you can see it. The brush is wet, and I'm going to go in and try and lift, not lift the paint off, but just blend the paint in. I don't know, I've got splats of paint all over it. All right, blend the paints in so it blends in. And this is what I mean by starting to bring it sort of all in together. So again, paint in. I'm not purposely going over the edge. So it's not like I'm really, really, you know, putting paint around the edge. But what I'm trying to do, but what I'm doing, sorry, is when I do get that bit of paint around the edge, I'm not panicking, but I'm taking in the wet brush and I'm softening it. And I'm taking the black that it lifts and wiping it off so it doesn't just smear it too much around and then that softens it around it and then what's what this is starting to do is like I said it's starting to soften it all and blend it all and bring it all in together right and again and you need to do this as you uh, as you go because otherwise what will happen is the paint around these cogs will dry and then you won't be able to lift it or move it. So you need to do it while the paint is still wet around there. And the further you come out, the better. The more it sort of blends it in. Don't forget it's watered down. It's not going to cover up your background. It might lighten your background. That's okay. It just helps pull it all in together. getting these gaps okay and then before that starts to dry because it's it's a gesso that I'm using so it will start to dry quick before it starts to dry too much I'm just gonna move it around I did a bit much water there If you feel anywhere like that where you get like a slightly harsh line, then pick up some of the black, water down black, and add it around it, just to again help start softening it. And that's all you're doing is you're adding the black, you're being relatively careful you don't get too much around the edge, but you're not worrying about it. And the stuff that you do get around the edge, you're using a wet brush to just move it, to move it, to lift it. Okay, and let me show you how that's starting to, so I don't know if you can, if you can get, see how it's just, it's blending in all around there. It's not, it's not solid black around there, but you've used that brush to sort of just soften it all around there so that that colour sort of starts blending. Don't forget you're going to be changing the colour of the cogs in a minute, but at least the background is now all sort of starting to blend in together. Not blend in together so that it's lost, but blend in together so that um, it's cohesive and it sort of all goes together. So on this, on this uh, moulded piece, it's just making sure I get in all the gaps. And again with my wet brush before it dries too much. And I'm gonna to wanna to try and take some of this off because that goes on quite thick when you do them edges. Okay, and then catch the edges again. So I'm a bit more careful. It's all just about just keep working until you're happy. Don't forget, some of this will be covered, some won't. You can use your fingers to smooth out the edges. I'm just after no harsh lines, no harsh marks. 
There we go. Why you've still got the black out, you can just use some of the black to again bring down the edges so it's not too bright and so that it comes in with the bits that you're adding. keeping any of the pieces covered like that so I don't know how well you can see all the pieces on there because obviously for some reason it's not like that. that's the pieces on there at the moment okay and the background you can see you still got the bits of red showing through that we stamped at the start you still got some of the color shining at the edges but it's all starting to sort of be brought in together and blend together Okay, for some reason, as soon as I put this down, oh, it looks like it's frozen. For some reason, as soon as I put the, um, yep, it definitely looks like we are frozen. As soon as I put that down on the desk, it, you can't see the cogs at all. Okay, so for some reason, when this is on my desk, you cannot see the pieces that clearly, but you can when I hold it up here, even though the light down here is very good. But anyway, okay, so the next thing I want to do now is start adding some colour. So at the start, I said about all these colours that are similar, and these ones are sort of that transparent look, so they were great for colouring the heart. But now I'm going on the cogs, which is black. These will get lost, okay? These will just blend straight in, and you won't really see them at all. So this is where I want to use these. So this is why these would be my recommendation if you had to have... Um, just one type of paint is because I could water them down and do the heart with it the same as I did use the other ones but for oh, it's a bit much for something like this um, this paint is what you need so that you can see it so I am giving a spritz of water so I can soften it but that's only because this one is a high viscosity which just means it is extra extra thick and all I'm going to go in now and do is just you know add some bits of colour around the cogs okay so some of my paint is still wet oh excuse me so that means that it will add and we'll get some black on it now this looks a bit oh in your face and um whatever else and that's fine take another brush again a bit like what we did with the black wet it down and then just dab over the top of it so take another brush Wet it down, dab over the top of it. Okay, so you, you're kind of doing what we just did with the black on the journal, and we're just bringing it down a bit. But you know, we are going to add more layers to this anyway, so that's absolutely fine. Uh, it's not going to look bright and garish by the time we've sort of finished. So I'm just adding bits here and there, no real rhyme or reason now. Normally, if I'm adding rust to a project, I would say, oh, you know, what you want to do is you want to try and focus. So at points like around here where water would gather, you're more likely to get rust there. So, you know, make your rusty colours more there and so on and so forth. This isn't this isn't what this project's about. This isn't about, you know, trying to make it look a little bit more true to form. This is about um, 
just making things look rusty just and it's not even rusty for the sake of it looking rusty this is just about giving it some color giving it some color adding some color um you know and and helping create our focal point that's that's what this is about so don't you know beat yourself up that oh, where would the rust be and stuff like that you can if you want but that's not you know the idea of this and again go with it it looks scarish it looks scary just go with it it's not going to look like that when you're done and we're just adding some bits of the darker color in and again if the paint underneath is a little bit wet that's fine because it all just blends and moves around i've definitely got a big dollop of black wet paint there because every time i put a color on it the black goes over it there we go got you uh, let's get some in there okay and don't really want it on the paper so i'm going to try and take it off of there okay uh, and again we can take our other brush and we can soften it a bit in places okay so just i'm oh, doing it just dabbing it gently if there's any way you don't want it try and get rid of it All right, so let me hold this up so you can see how this is looking. Like I say, it looks quite bright in that now at the moment, but it's not going to be like that when we are done. And don't forget, I haven't done this bit because this is where my clock's going. Right, while them bits dry a little bit, oh, actually, before finish i want to do these bits don't i so same as what we've just done on there don't forget these ones because we are going to be using these okay and then we can put some of the red in there that's not red is it it's more like a uh, oxide color And again, if any of them are too bright, just take your brush and lighten them a bit. Okay, so. We are going to give these a bit of a dry. And don't forget, like most paints, when you start to dry them, they will lighten in colour. So they won't look as garish then. And we haven't finished adding to our layers yet. We are right near the end of the project now. So it's, it's, it's that bit where you start to sort of put, put bits together and finish off. Alright, so for some reason it's hard to see in the camera, but we've got these that have got the rust sort of effect on them. And remember, it's not for a rust effect, it's more for the colour and these. Okay, and now I'm going to use uh, some white gold wax. And I'm going to use this around the edge. And that's because when I add it on, I want this to sort of be framed and sort of still stand out a bit and what I'm also going to do is rub a, rub a bit here and there with my dirty fingers because that will add to it over the face okay and I like that where one side looks a lot lighter than the other side now so it really gives it that age look and again with the heart i'm going to do the same i'm going to add this around the edge so it gives it that frame to sort of help it stand out and i'm gonna catch some of the texture with it 
whether it be the distressing tech like distress embossing powder texture that i added or whether it be the texture from the gone wrong crackle paste you can it doesn't matter where you add it you're just giving it that sort of more warm look okay and that's the heart all right okay and so now what i'm gonna do is start to with these bits on here i am going to use the wax to catch the edges of these as well so you're going to cover up some of them colors you just put on there but you're also going to leave some showing so this is what i mean by it's not going to look as garish in that afterwards is it's just about really light touch look at that mold once it's got the uh embossing oh the wax on it it really sort of shows up but look at the difference between them and them so you could still got some of the color in there you still got some of the effect in there but they look completely different uh now you've added the wax so it just starts to sort of bring it all um together and that's what i say don't you know when you when you sometimes when you're making a creation don't think oh i've ruined it it looks awful um you know it looks really garish i can't say it. keep going because you know your finished piece once you've added the layers thank you stacy your finished piece once you've added the, all the layers start to transform it and start to make it look completely different so um i will as i always do take a photo after the live so you can get a better idea of the colors but so you can see the colors in the cogs you can see that rust you put on there you can see the rusty bits you can see the different shades you've put in but you can see how they're all brought together just by adding that little bit of wax brings them together tones them down um stops them looking garish in any way whatsoever yeah and it just you know it highlights bits it highlights texture so if when you're putting your paint on you sort of stippled it on a bit you'll get them that nice effect in your um on your cogs and that and it just really sort of all adds to it so you know always keep going uh always keep doing stuff so let's have a look at adding these pieces on so the heart is going to go there and again a gel medium is probably whoop, it's probably better here oh thanks Jacqueline yeah well that's the good thing when you've um with the lives is that they are always available for people afterwards so let's pop the heart on there and we still haven't finished yet we've got another color to add in again a, a 3d gel will probably a gel medium probably better i don't know why i'm not using mine now but it's just quicker and easier sometimes to use glue and then i'm going to add this piece on about here here we'll say yeah about there so we're going to add that on about there and then these we are going to layer up let's put them on my acrylic block put one there and again you might be better to use a 3d gel here because don't forget we've added all that distressing uh embossing powder and that under that and that's all coarse and and gritty so um you know it'd be harder to sort of adhere it uh to this than a gel would but this is what i've got to hand i think i will probably have to get the gel out though in a second And then we're gonna add this oh, here. Yep, I think I am gonna have to use gel on that bit. It is not going to stick to something that is gritty and grainy. Oh, you're both so kind, ladies. Um, right. 
So I am going to add a bit of uh, heavy body gel or heavy gel medium. Oh, that's better. Let's stuck that. Uh, it will dry clear. So where it's sticking out, it will dry clear. I'm not so worried. Um, but I do not like seeing it on there at all. Okay. Right. It will dry clear, so you won't see that underneath after it's finished, but it definitely needed a gel medium on there. Okay, so where are we at now? Okay, so now we're going to use, and we're right near the end, so now we're going to use a blue green. So if you haven't got that, a turquoise um, or something similar. Actually, first of all, what I'm going to do is them um, cogs that I've just stuck on, I'm going to add a bit of our wax to them. All right. Actually, I'll take this off for a minute while I add. Make it easier while it's wet because I'm just going to keep knocking it off anyway. Okay, right, so now I'm going to use the blue green and again a bit of water I'll put it next to the paint and now I'm going to lift some of the, the colour up and I'm just going to dab it in places to add sort of that patinery sort of look and again just select places in fact that bit in there needs a bit of wax on it if I can get my finger in there oh that's possibly a bit much but that's all right because i'll put a bit of patina over that and perhaps a bit around here oh. and on here check I'm not missing any uh, chat so I am literally just adding some bits of what would be your patina look just in because a, a rusty looking project would not quite be the same without um, a bit of patina somewhere in it and again you might not be able to quite see this on the uh, <clears throat> video because for some reason despite it being very good light it is showing it as all quite black and dark until I hold it up to the camera okay and you'll have to excuse me because my brain and my cogs are whirring thinking where do I want to add stuff so but then that's kind of the idea of crafting isn't it is that we get to we get to zone out and we get to um just enjoy the enjoy the process and obviously when you're doing a live you kind of uh you do have to sort of talk a little bit through it um but sometimes i do like to just think about where i'm adding these colors all right so if you start to get the look of where the patina is and you see how it just adds another dimension in into it And then the last thing, so I want to add these. So these were my little um, Tim Holtz compass hand things. I'll be got them in a uh, in a set for me for my birthday, and I have never. I think it's one of them sets that I cover, <laughs> like most things uh, that us crafters get, and we cover <laughs> the stuff we've got, and we don't end up actually using it. Um, so. Yeah, and I'm I'm determined this year I'm going to use stuff up. And as I'm doing this type of theme, they work perfectly. Now, I'm not covering. They're already a great colour to go with the project. I'm not covering the whole of the hands. I'm just, you know, just just lining the edges with a bit of the, oh, with a bit of the wax. Okay, so it just sort of um, 
sort of highlights the side a little bit and these are going to go on up here and again these may need 3d gel because yeah they are going to need 3d gel because i've got all the crackly sort of stuff there um which is not going to allow it to fit so let's set this on and then the other one oh, oh come back little one a bit of gel on that okay now what I've just thought that I want to do that I should have done before I stuck all these top bits on is add some splats because this all looks good i really like it but it just feels like it needs something else to pull it in so i want to add some splats in a similar color to the wax that i've used and i have now put this all on so i'm gonna to have to try and cover it up in some way oh look at all of that i don't want to waste that oh sam i don't know how i'm gonna to have to i'm not gonna be able to pick it up oh don't like wasting paint as we all know crafting supplies can be so expensive as it is okay so i have got a gold it's just an acrylic paint add a little bit what can i put over this uh, Then I put over it. Oh, got some paper. I don't think it. The problem is when you when you put paper over something and then do your splats, they never look as organic as they could, because um, you know your paper stops the splats going in certain areas. But I should have done it before I added these top bits at least. Um, if I try and make it the same sort of shape. <laughs> so before you've added your top focal bits just uh just if you're going to put splats or that on do them do them first um don't do what i'm doing but at least by doing this you can see that there are other ways around it so if you have put everything on you can get around it okay so i'm going to add some water to that gold paint Make it really runny, more runny than that, and I'm going to splat. And I think that's probably enough splats, but I do also know enough splats there that one another little tiny teeny bit of this around here and then I think after that I will be done so I'm just a bit around there so it's sort of, oh obviously the gel hasn't set yet that's the only thing with the 3d gel it takes a while to set okay and obviously that bit in the middle which is irritatingly white now will dry clear and I think I'll put a bit more here and obviously you can keep going back and adding bits where you want them um, over time and obviously 
uh, as stuff dries you'll find it gets lighter so you might want to go back in and add stuff because you you know you, you the thing is you put it on and it looks a certain color it dries it dries a lot lighter and you can barely see it so you might want to go in and add you might be happy with how it's come out I could keep faffing for ages so I am going to call it a day because I've now been uh, on for a while uh, make sure you just put I'll say that and then I'm going to add more and I think I'm relatively happy with that so that is going to be what my journal cover is obviously these would hook in there um it's about the journal cover but that is my journal cover and can you see the splats I just think it helps uh bring it all in so I definitely done that but I've done it in a gold because then you know it still fits with all the colors that I've used um and that's the piece so there's lots of different colors and textures in there but there wasn't a lot used. There was a heart, there was the clock face and some cogs, obviously a mould and the, and the bits. So, you know, bits from a stash, cogs and this page. And like I say, if you haven't got any paper for the background, use um, stamps. But I like the fact, you know, it's got that sort of real gritty sort of edge. Yeah, and that's the, that's the page done. Hopefully you like it. Hopefully you can see it clear enough. Um, in fact, I'm quite excited to make the back and then make stuff to go inside it now. <laughs> 